play back a rough edit which we've made. Then after that, we'll go back and play the tape again and discuss some of the points which we feel we should include possibly in the tape as a, a means of feedback. I'm really a nature sculptor is what I am. And it, beca it essentially becomes because that's what I really love, is nature, landscape, and that's the reason why I'm sitting out here. And so uh, the influences are uh, certainly many in the realms of artists, but they're also uh, uh, very intensely, they've come into uh, observations of land, uh, rock formation, stratification, um, shell shapes, cloud shapes, natural shapes, tree shapes, rocks, wood shapes, stuff like that. Uh, they all have sort of played a part in... Uh, you also have a very strong reference to the female figure, though. Oh, yeah, very much so. Uh, I just uh, love the woman's body, you know. I just think it's... Uh, to be blunt, it's beautiful, you know. And uh, it's always been something... I, I, I guess I put it this way. If there's any shape in the world that has meaning, is there one that's more than the woman's body, you know, to a man? I don't think there could be. And ultimately, it seems like most messages have to pass through that. I think, too, that my experiences with women, uh, primarily my mother and my wife, were very, very intense and marvelous experiences. And so that, again, the meaning comes through those relationships which I had. And uh, when I had bad times or ill times, it's always, I think, then women have really nursed me, if I may put it in that way, or brought me back to a certain kind of health and strength, you know. Uh, I guess I find meaning in them, an infinite amount of meaning. And uh, so uh, the female figure ultimately is the uh, prime focus of what I work on, and it will probably always be that way. This piece is called Portrait of Sydney. It was probably done about 11 or 12 years ago. Uh, it actually was a portrait, which I did of my wife. Within this piece, I, I, I started actually smoothing the planes down, working pretty closely from the human figure. Uh, the portrait is very similar to her. Uh, I used, uh, she had lovely breasts and I used those forms. Uh, this, the pregnant stomach is uh, somewhat symbolic of, of the children, three children that she bore. I learned after doing it what I really sensed that she was about. Uh, as uh, I maybe mentioned before, the Mind is far behind the heart, and uh, sometimes we have to work from the heart and discover through our minds what we're saying. One thing is that, for instance, when I take a, take a walk in nature, that uh, I get a very, very strong sexual response from walking in nature. Very, very intense. And uh, it's always been with me. I mean, it's been with me for years and years. And I think that that uh, sexuality or whatever it is reveals itself in the figures, in the female figures. And I guess that's where the, you know, the land and, and the woman sort of tie in together too. Not only did I get a, a, a sort of uh, reason for being uh, in my art and why I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say, but uh, I also find the, the most, uh, shall we say, the vital sexual juices seem to start really moving when I'm out there. You know, and um, I'm sure that all of this plays a factor. How how it couldn't, I I I don't know. I I've when I taught, I often said to the students, uh, pay attention to what you love and what you feel passionately about. And I said those are the things you want to speak of. Uh, don't get too worried about what everyone else is doing. Just look at yourself and look at the things that you feel and feel intensely about and find out what, you, what it is you really do love. I think that's important. Uh, and what has meaning within those things. And pursue those things. Speak of them. That will be the real you. I often work with maquettes or models. They help one to be much more efficient in working with the piece and resolving the idea. Most of the time, I'll start out an idea at a very small scale, doing sometimes drawing sketches or sketch just clay sketches. In this particular case, a very small clay sketch. You can work out the masses, the large masses, very quickly. And from this, if I seem satisfied with it, I'll then move into the intermediate size, which is about this scale. And then once that is worked out, I'll 
turn around and start translating into the large piece. In the beginning, you have to kind of keep the whole thing going and, uh, so you get the composition worked out in a, in a general sense. In other words, you have to get your proportions fixed. Well, pretty much so it seems like there's a balance to the whole thing. Once you've got that and a basic idea of what you're going to do, then you kind of start pinning down area. process of casting this, taking a mold and casting into the mold and just reassembling, putting it all together, taking the, the mold off, usually takes about three days on a piece this size. When I first got into art, I didn't do it by doing art, I went to philosophy and studied aesthetics because I didn't know what art was about and I thought, gee, I'm sort of getting interested in this, I guess I'll go in and you know, take some art courses, find out, some philosophy courses, find out. And, uh, you know, after, after you've been in it for a while, I think, like, geez, how totally irrelevant it is. You do uh, kind of what comes to your mind and what comes to your heart, you know, and, and you keep, in my case, I keep pursuing it. I keep wanting to find it and crystallize it. probably said to you, I, I sometimes think of myself as a uh, contemporary Hudson River School sculptor, you know, because I, I feel terrific rapport with the Hudson River School painters of the uh, 19th century, and uh, I guess in a lot of ways I feel like uh, I'm trying to say emotionally or structurally a lot of things that they were trying to say, except it's in sculpture and it's probably a little more abstract. question that I've asked myself, I've, I've looked, let's put it this way, I look through the art magazines, I go to the galleries and museums, I see what's going on and I'm all, I'm, I, I, I have to ask myself the question, well, you know, look what's going on here, is, are, are these directions, are, are, are the statements in these works something that has more meaning to you or as much meaning to you as the work that you do yourself? And it doesn't, uh, because I do refer back to the things that are important to me and um, a lot of this, most of the stuff there is not important to me and what they say is not really important to me. Uh, probably what's out on this farm uh, is important to me. What's out, what out, was out in the, the, the prairie of North Dakota or the uh, southern deserts of uh, Arizona. They, the land there, as I mentioned before, the women that I've known, uh, people that I love, the seashell, uh, the clouds, the sky, the wind, that, it, let's put it this way, it gives me the magic of life more than anything else, so I'm going to talk about the magic. It's a series of uh, head studies started uh, a number of years ago. Actually, I think it started in the late 60s. And it evolved over about a five-year period, actually. Um, I originally did a, a smaller series uh, in scale. And then I liked that so much that I enlarged them to these monumental outdoor pieces. It started from a portrait head, which I had done of a friend. Uh, that starred the sequence, and uh, at that point I wanted to see what would happen if I would tend to make it more uh, cubistic, uh, which is the second one there, and uh, then it became uh, more, uh, more plain, to continue to become more plain, and more simplified. The first three evolved in a short period of time, in approximately two years, but it took a while. There was a gap of a few years before the last three occurred, and uh, they evolved when I was uh, working out in North Dakota. And what you really see here is a sequence of, uh, in six heads, of how my style really evolved. Uh, and that's one reason why, and in, a, in other words, basically taking the same theme, 
but continually changing the basic uh, style in which I'm approaching that the same particular theme. In that sense, I think it's kind of uh, anyone's ever really interested in what happened to Bob Wick during those years, they could certainly see it very obviously, and from a stylistic standpoint, taking the same head and just continuing on over a five-year period. I certainly feel that my work is very autobiographical, uh, not only uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint. Very often the subject matter that I involve myself in are subjects which, uh, if they don't start out being autobiographical, they end up being that. They tell me pretty much what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. Um, uh, in this particular sequence, the I think one significant aspect of it, and why it's, it's interesting that people sometimes do call this a life-death series, my wife died while I was working on it. And I, I don't think that that escaped what was going on inside of me. Uh, so I think that it probably played a part of um, what was revealed. No matter what I was thinking on the surface, down underneath, I was obviously maybe saying something different. The great mystery about creation is, is the fact that, and what I, what I really, why I find that I continue to want to be involved in it, is the fact that, that it's like looking down a dark hallway inside your own head. And there's an endless number of doors. And as you go down the hallway, you keep opening one door after another. And in it, you discover something. The beauty of a work of art is that when it's all done, you say, where in the hell did it come from? I don't understand. You know, I don't understand how I put it together and what the, all that, uh, you know, those neurons and whatever, there are billions of them that are up inside your brain are, are mixing it all together and saying, let's make sense out of it. Let's organize it. Let's find meaning through form, you know. Uh, I've often said that sculpture is a three-dimensional structure of the brain, my brain anyway, maybe not somebody else's, but that's what it's about. And when you look at that, you really look at a structural, physical, three-dimensional reality of what my head is about. I can see that if one wanted to go on for an extended period of time, one could continually edit and control and perfect, but I'm not quite sure you'd come off quite the, you, you come off the image you want to make of yourself rather than really what you are. I think this is a fairly, probably a pretty honest appraisal of what I am. Uh, I, you know, we could, as I say, we could control it more and keep controlling it until finally Bob Wick makes Bob Wick rather than Bob Wick is Bob Wick. <laughs> And I don't, I'm not sure that I really want that. I just soon be honest with myself and the public too. At this stage of the game, anyway. Maybe, maybe you make uh, works of art uh, as, uh, uh, or works, works of personality. You know, like making a John Kennedy or somebody like that. That's maybe that's the way you do it. You just keep working with it until finally you perfect it and say, "That's what I want of myself." You know, it's not what I am. But that's what. I, huh? I know. Now I realize that. But what I'm saying is, I'm not quite sure I would want that either. I I don't. Think so.